Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to do feature extraction for a convolutional neural network model in order to detect objects in images. Feature extraction, along with fine-tuning or transfer learning, are two of the most popular techniques for using pre-trained uh, neural networks. They are both uh, recommended by MATLAB documentation and the deep learning book, uh, deep learning with Python book from Franco uh, Cholet. Basically, they, uh, for fine-tuning, uh, it consists on taking a, a pre-trained, in this case, convolutional neural network and coding the classification layers. These convolutional neural networks, the pre-trained ones, uh, usually are trained for uh, millions of, of images and are trained to classify maybe 1,000 classes. And most likely the classes that you want to classify are not in there. So you want to cut the last layer, add your own layers, and re uh, train the, the whole model to classify the, the, the problem, the, the type of objects that you want to classify. Okay, so there's a video of showing how to uh, do transfer learning. It's on the link uh, on the references of this video. Uh, the alternative that we're going to go in this video is feature extraction, which is faster than uh, transfer learning or fine tuning. In the case of uh, feature extraction, uh, instead of replacing and retraining the whole network, what is done is coding, again, uh, coding the classification layers and training, I mean, feeding the inputs, the, the, the training inputs for uh, the pre-trained network, getting the features as output values, and then uh, using, that to, use, using that to set, to train a separate network. Let's say, for example, uh, a couple of layers of uh, fully connected layers for classification. So you feed the feature values and and train train this independent network. Uh, or, but in this example, I'm going to show how to do it with a support vector machine from the machine learning toolbox. Okay. A, a one one advantage of using feature extraction is that uh, it's very fast. It's faster than a, fi a fine tuning. And also, if you if you don't have a much data, uh, like in this example, or you don't have a GPU, uh, it is very convenient. Okay, uh, so MATLAB offers uh, various uh, pre-trained networks. These are some of them, and we're going to use a ResNet in this example. And in addition to the ones that are offered, the here, here is the list. Uh, you could also load a pre-trained model from Cafe, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, uh, or any other platform that uses the ONNX uh, 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 standard. Uh, or, and also you can export it uh, using that. Okay. So let's start uh, with example. Let's discard the changes. Uh, so here's the training set. Uh, I'm going to extract it. So notice that uh, we have five categories, cap, cube, plane car, screwdriver, and torch. So each uh, folder has like uh, maybe 11 pictures of for the category. So we're going to use a data store uh, to to grab the images, this is like uh, generators in Python, in TensorFlow. So basically, what they're gonna do is gonna they're gonna read the data, not in the moment that you create it, but in the moment that you read it. So each time you read it, you're gonna get a batch uh, of data. So and they're gonna use the folders for the labels. So the labels are gonna automatically be created. Okay, so let's get the first data store. Okay, so we have 72 uh, or 75, 75. So now let's split it using this command from data stores. Uh, we're going to get 70% for training and 30% for test. Okay. So with that, uh, we have a uh, like 55 uh, for, for training. And this is randomized. So basically they randomly pick one for or the other for, for each of the two buckets. So we have 24 tested. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, so we're gonna pick up is uh, 16 indexes randomly just to show some of them. This is just to show the pictures uh, that we have. Okay. Yeah, so we can see the screwdriver, the, the cube and the cap, etc. Okay, so this is a very simple problem. We just want to classify five type of uh, objects in images. So we're gonna use ResNet. Uh, this is uh, one of the networks that we showed. It's like a mid-size network. 
Okay, so the inputs, the first layers is the input, and we need the input because we the images in these folders are not necessarily the same size, so we have to do some reshape based on, based on this 24 by 224 by 224. So uh, if you are not able to load the ResNet, it's going to give you a link to install it. Okay, so let's take a look at the network. Okay, so here's the network. So, okay, so it has a, a very simple pattern of a convolution, a batch convolu convolution with batch co normalization, a rectified linear unit as a separate layer, and a max pooling. So you're going to see this pattern of uh, these uh, four layers repeated all over again. You can see repeated here, repeated here. And ResNet, I understand that comes from residual net. And the main feature is that you branch from a previous layer to uh, a layer in the in the later, so that if features from here are, are not lost. Okay, so that's basically it. You're gonna have a lot of convolution, and as always, you have the input image uh, as the, the size of the input uh, here, and it, the height and width are gonna get reduced down to one eventually, and the number of features get increased from. Uh, like 64 in this case to 512. Okay, uh, so we want to uh, notice that the last layers are the fully connected layer, softmax, and this is classic. These are clear classification. Up to here is convolution. So we don't want the classification one. So we're gonna get the outputs of this layer. So we're gonna feed the input image, the data stores for the image, and then we're gonna collect the outputs uh, from here. Notice that the outputs are going to be 512 features. Okay. Okay, so now let's do that. Uh, uh, first, we need an augmented data store. We are not going to do a fine transformation in this case. We are only going to use it for resizing into the size of the, of the input image. And notice that the reshape is only done on the first two dimensions. The channel dimension, the third dimension is left as it is. Okay, so now we have a the augmented data stores for training and test. So now we're going to use the activation method. As mentioned before, uh, we're going to pick up uh, this pool 5, which is this layer, the last one, the last convolution. So we're going to use the activations method from the network. Uh, okay, I'm going to show it here. So I don't like this format because it looks like activation is an independent method when actually it's a method. It's not an independent function. It's a method of the net network, the pre-training network. So you call a, so this method takes the the training data, which is the input to the network, and for a particular layer, it give me the output as rows. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, and this is the output that we're gonna fit to to train the support vector machine. Okay. So it's gonna just gonna be a, a tensor, a matrix. Okay. So okay. So it's a uh, notice. This is the number of samples uh, for training and for test. It's gonna be the same a no, a number of values, uh, 512 features. So we're gonna have the same for this one, but it's gonna be uh, 20 rather than 20 by 512. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the labels are coming from the original data store uh, because they already have the labels, and this is going to match the number of samples uh, and the, the, the value is a categorical. So this is the expected values. So now we can train the support vector machine. We provide the expected values, which is the category. Let's just take a look at it. So it's the torch, the playing cards, the category of the of the, of the images, and the classifier. Uh, okay, now we also pass the the tensor of training data, which is the features. So with that, we got the so the train support vector machine, and this is very fast. This is why super convenient, because if we were to train a, a neural network, it would may, may take maybe. A few minutes or hours depending how big your network is but this is immediately okay uh, yeah so maybe even in production you can train this support vector machine i don't know okay 
And so now let's predict uh, with the with the test features to see how good it predicts. Okay, again, uh, I don't like this format. Uh, this not a separate function, but a method of the of the support vector machine to predict the values. We just pass the features and we get the corresponding values. So we also for the feature we have the expected values. So we're gonna just display the output for a few images. And we can see in here that uh, it's a cup, a cube, a screwdriver and playing cards. Okay, so it did the predictor depression correctly. But one thing that the example doesn't mention is that if you want to put this in production, when you want to predict a value, you also have to use the the original convolutional network because you have to feed the input to the network and get the feature value and then the feature value is given to the support vector machine to do the actual prediction. So you you need both of them, the deep learning neural network and the, the shallow, I mean the classification network, both at the same time. Okay, so now uh, let's compare the output of the prediction with the test with what we expect. Let's see the accuracy. 100% accuracy matches matches everything. It is a small problem, so it's no surprise that it had a perfect score. Okay. Now, uh, in in the case in the case that uh, the the pre-trained network uh, matches the are very is very close from the categories that you want to train, then it is okay to get the full network and did it as we did. Uh, using all the layers. But let's say that uh, what you want to classify uh, is very far away from what this neural network is trained still. You can leverage the more generic uh, layers that are, yeah, you want. So instead of doing a fully deep uh, feature extraction, we can do a more shallow uh, feature extraction. Let's say that we want to do it from here. Yep. Oh, is the three. One. We, we're, we're gonna use this one, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. The previous one, the, the pool five, it uh, had pooling, and this one didn't. You uh, notice that the output is not a uh, one by 512, it's 20 by 28. So we need to do some pooling. Uh, either we could do the maximum of all of this sub matrix of 28 by 28, or we can get the average, which is the, what the example does. So we basically do the pooling manually. So, okay, so we are gonna pick that layer. Uh, we're gonna use the activations method from the network and with the particular layer and provide the input data for the network. So let's get the, the feature values at this point. So since we are doing this uh, more shallow, uh, it is more generic, it might give us better results. It should be quicker as well. So notice that the output this time is 20 by 20 by 128, and also the, the sample dimension is at the end. So let's just take the mean of this. Whoops, this is not what I want to do. I want to know the size of this. After taking the mean in the first two dimensions, we don't have the height and width dimensions anymore. We just, we just got the feature, which is good. But now we got singleton dimensions. We don't want that. So by, by doing squeeze, we get rid of the singleton dimensions. But now we need to transpose as well in order to put this uh, sample dimension in the front. So let's go ahead and do this. OK, now we have the data as we want it. We have the features on the back. We have a, we average, average them and get the sample dimension in the front for training. Now we can train. A, the support vector machine, this is a machine learning tool function. Uh, yeah, so we pass the training, the input, the features, the features data and the expected values. Now we can train it. Okay, now let's predict the values and let's see how uh, comparing again against, against expected test values for the test. So the accuracy is 100%. So in this case, uh, well, uh, if you have a 100% accuracy in the shallow layer, maybe using the shallow layer is more convenient. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you very much.